going from two, two members of the club to 180 plus, it shows that there is kids out there that really do care. And we reach out to the community, not only with the five teams, but we do community, like um, we do like a fundraiser that involves the community, like whether we help out other clubs with trash pickup or we do, you know, we, we, we wash cars and we were mentioning the Lakewood Sentinel and just getting the media and the publicity to show that teenagers care. I think not only are those 180 kids making a difference, but it's, it, just, it just shows that if those kids are out there having the will to change things, that there's, there are other kids out there that are willing to do the same. We're here today because we received Bionic as a team received the Asset Builder of the Year Award from PAC and it's really just to show that we have done as a school made a difference and it just shows that we care and we can make a difference in the community and have people support us also. I think it's wonderful that the Bionic team was recognized today by civic and group members in the community to let them know that, you know, we're behind you and we um, support what you're doing and we're willing to share it with other people that maybe they can get it in their schools and in other communities. It is so exciting uh, just to see the work that these young people have put out uh, over the last uh, one and a half years and to see that they're being awarded for it. And just to see that these young people are really making a difference in the community and I think that encourages them that people, that the adults recognize them for what they're doing. Last year my grandfather had passed away and I had been out of the building for a couple days and when I got back two of the Bionic kids had come by and they presented a Starbucks card for me. So you know the Super Bowl that they had with the ceramic bowls and stuff, while the money they collected from that, that's what they used to buy us our bed and it was pretty cool. I think it's pretty amazing to see these young ones who can reach out to someone they might not know and offer them that kind of comfort. I don't really know how they found out about my grandma, but it was really nice that they actually did something about it instead of just like, you know, just like saying that they're sorry and stuff, so it was really nice. I was shocked when I opened the door that there was such a group of people. I was expecting one or two people. I didn't know what to expect. And there was a bunch of wonderful people that came to the door. I'll bet you there was six or eight in the group, and they were so kind in their comments and so nice about everything and so sincere that I was I was moved to tears. They know that they're doing it like they put up their spare time to help other people. My mother did pass away um, last May and once again you know uh, Miss Austin and the Bionic students um, came out you know and reached out to me um, to help me through you know a time of real sorrow and certainly when I came on board, you know, right away, the, the first group I heard from and received a gift when I was still at my other school was from the Bionic team. And so I, it made me feel welcome. As far as how students on the Bionic team have been impacted by the outreaches, what was really exciting for me to hear was last spring, one of the students that, one of the students who is now in college, she said, Miss Austin, you know, one thing that I learned from the Bionic team is how to reach out to someone else when they're hurting. And she said that a girl on her floor in the dorm uh, had lost a loved one. And she said, everyone is thinking, what do we do? I don't know what to do. You know, it, people want to talk to them, but they're afraid to say the wrong thing. And she said, from the Bionic team, I learned, I just went and bought a Snickers candy bar, made a little card and just went up to her and said, I just want to let you know I'm thinking of you during this time. I know it can be difficult when you lose a loved one. Just want to let you know you're in my thoughts and prayers. And that was, so she's carrying that on when she's out of high school. Also, there are two other situations. Uh, one was when we were delivering pies, we always have someone that speaks for the team 
and says, you know, we're thinking of you during this time. And so one evening, a girl uh, was doing a little, the little talk to the mother, but the mother broke out into tears, and it was very difficult for the mother. And afterwards, after we do the pie deliveries, we get together outside by our cars, and we talk about it. As a counselor, I want to process to see how the kids are doing with that. And she said, she just broke into tears, and she said, Miss Austin, what did I do to make the mom cry? And so what was powerful is we talked about that situation in the other pie deliveries where we've given the pies to families and they haven't cried, and we talked about the different stages of grief that people go through. And so what was really exciting was the next time we did a pie delivery, she was the first one that said, Miss Austin, can I do the speech again? So I could tell that she was able to work through that process. And then another situation was when uh, we had, I had, uh, gone to another high school that had experienced the death of a student. And two of our, two of our students and I went, and we went to the, the school, delivered the poster, came back out. I asked them how it was. And the students, it was, it was a very different type of school than ours as far as the ethnic balance in the school. And the, the students both said, mis they basically said that they were kind of scared as they were going through the halls and everything, and they saw these students. They didn't want to look at them the wrong way because they may think that they were challenging them. And then what happened is they so they just felt very uncomfortable in that school. And those students said, Ms. Austin, I wonder how many students feel that way when they're new to our school. And they said, through the Bionic team, we can help those students feel more comfortable and more accepted in our school. The common thought about teenagers today is that they don't care about anyone except themselves. You know, someone else can suffer a loss and, you know, they, they don't care. It doesn't affect them so they're not going to do anything about it. And, you know, seeing all those kids on my porch one night was just, I, it really, it lifted my spirit. People's perception of a lot of teenagers are, you know, not helping out, lazy, you know, stuff like that, and I just like to change that perception. These kids up here do care about their world, um, want to make it a better place for other people as well, and want to lend support to those in need. The world typically thinks that teenagers only care about themselves. I just think that saying is really silly because everybody feels pain, everybody feels sad at one point in their life. And what the Bionic team does, especially the school tragedy team, is like, you know, show that we have that common ground, that we do care. And I mean, everybody's human, everybody cares. And so that this whole saying to me is just so silly. Um, especially, I mean, if you look at how many kids are signing up to be in Bionic, people are always asking, what is Bionic? When's the next Bionic meeting? And what do we do? Can you call me for an outreach? You know, just seeing that is, how could you ever even have that saying come into your head? I think teenagers probably have some of the biggest hearts and really, you give a teenager a cause, they will do anything possible um, to resolve or solve an issue. And uh, they represent the majority of teenagers. Older generations think that we're useless, we're into drugs and sex and violence and suicides. And it's really sad because they're such a low percent, but yet that's what they kind of um, market a lot. And so this is just a way to get our names out and like tell everyone that, hey, we're not about this. We are about you know, the goods and the positives, and we really can make a difference, and we really can make, make the world a better place just by our generation doing great things to help each other out. We're the leaders of the future. 